Today on The Hookup, we're gonna take another look at the most versatile solution for automating window coverings. Often called blinds drivers, these motors can automate basically any window covering with a pull cord for as little as 40 bucks. About nine months ago, I made a video comparing the expensive Axis gear with a comparable product from Zemismart called the AM43 that costs about 20% as much. Unfortunately, at the time, I concluded that both of those motors had enough issues that I couldn't give either of them my full recommendation. Fast forward a few months and two new Wi-Fi blinds motors have hit the market and the DIY community has created some interesting solutions to allow for Wi-Fi local control of the $40 AM43 blinds driver from my last video. This video was sponsored by Govi and their new RGB IC LED strips. Govi's new strips use individually controlled LEDs, so while other strips require each LED in the strip to be the same color, the RGB IC strip can be customized just the way you want it. The Govi app has tons of pre-made animations which can be selected via the Bluetooth phone app or a physical button. To top it off, the strip also includes a high sensitivity microphone for use with their different sound reactivity patterns. Check out the Govi RGB IC strips from the link down in the description. Here are the three blinds drivers we're gonna check out today. Back for round two is the Zemismart AM43, which you can pick up for around $41, and it comes with a light duty solar panel and Bluetooth low energy control. For around $60, you can get a plug-in Wi-Fi motor that works natively with the Tuya Cloud, or it can be flashed with a custom Tasmoda firmware. And for $95, you can get a battery-powered version that uses a Wi-Fi bridge, so it can also work with Tuya or Tasmoda. Unlike the last video, when I determined that neither motor was a good pick, today I think all three motors are worth buying, but you're going to need to decide if you prefer a higher upfront cost with less fiddling, or a low cost with slightly less reliability and more tinkering. Let's start with the most expensive option. The battery-powered Wi-Fi motor is surprisingly strong. On the ordering page, you have the option of ordering with or without a remote, but as far as I can tell, it's not possible to pair both the Wi-Fi adapter and the remote at the same time, so you can save yourself the $4 and skip the remote. After mounting the bracket and installing the motor, you'll need to set up the upper and lower limits of your blinds, curtains, or shades. Setup is really simple. First, clear out any saved positions by short pressing the set button on the bottom with a paperclip and then holding the up button until the LED flashes. Next, use the up button to get to your first limit and once you're there, hit stop, then short press the set button and short press the up button. Next, use the down button to get to your second limit point. Short press the set button again and then short press the up key. As you're setting your limits, the motor is going to move extremely slowly. Don't worry about it, it moves much faster once the limits are set. Next, you're going to pair your Wi-Fi adapter with your blinds motor. To do this, you're going to double press the set button on the bottom of the motor twice. Not too fast, but not too slow. This took me a few tries to get right, but I think it's about one second on, half second off, and then one second on. If you did it right, the light on the front is going to blink rapidly. Once you see that light, press and hold the set button on the adapter until you see it flash rapidly. The pairing process takes about 60 seconds, so you gotta be patient. As far as control software goes, you've got two options. You can use the Tuya app and the Tuya Cloud to control this device, or you can flash it with Tasmoda for local control. To get it set up in the Tuya app, click on Add New Device, Small Home Appliance, and then select Curtain. Plug in the Wi-Fi adapter to any powered USB port and enter your Wi-Fi information in the Tuya app. Then just wait for it to be discovered. It's pretty easy. The Tuya app lets you create schedules, automations, and supports percent-based commands both in the app and in their Google Home and Amazon Echo skills. If you're like me and you prefer to have local control instead of using the Tuya Cloud, you can use Tuya Convert to put Tasmoda on the ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip that's in the adapter. Once you've flashed the device and logged into the Tasmoda Wi-Fi hotspot to input your Wi-Fi information, you can access the Tasmoda web UI by navigating to that device's IP address. You'll need all the latest Tasmoda features to set it up, so your first step should be to upgrade Tasmoda to the latest version. Next, go to Configuration, then Configure Module, and set the module type to Tuya MCU and hit Save. Next, click on Console and type in Tuya MCU 21, 2, which will designate that serial address as a dimmer. To control the blinds, you'll now have a typical slider that you would normally associate with a dimmer. Tasmoda supports partial open and partial close commands, but it has two limitations that could probably be solved by software, but I couldn't figure them out. First, for some reason, getting the dimmer to 0% doesn't move the motor at all. 
I think this is because it actually sends an off command instead of adjusting the brightness. This means that you actually need to send 1% instead of 0% to get the motor to move. Second, the percentages are some kind of non-linear scale where 1% is really 1% and 100% is really 100%, but 50% is more like 20%. Again, I'm pretty sure you can solve most of this with software commands, but I haven't been able to figure it out. So make sure you leave a comment down below if you know the fix for these issues, and I'll stick to your solution. Other than software, this model has two major downsides. First, even though the batteries are rechargeable, there's no solar panel to keep them topped off. To test the battery life, I created an automation to open and close my blinds every 20 seconds, and they were able to do that for two hours and 45 minutes, or about 248 open and close cycles. Even accounting for daily battery loss, I think it's reasonable to expect these to last about three to four months before recharging for light to medium window coverings, and significantly less for heavy applications like curtains. The second issue is that unlike all the other types of blinds motors that I've used, this one doesn't come with different shaped drive gears, so you can only use it with beaded chain style blinds. The next option is only $60, and it gets you the strongest motor that I've ever tested, Wi-Fi without a separate adapter, and the option to control with Wi-Fi or with an RF remote, but it has the massive downside of needing to be plugged into constant power. For me, this application works perfectly for my curtains where I already had an outlet, so I've actually replaced my DIY solution with this motor, which is significantly quieter and much more compact than my previous setup. To use this motor setup, first hold down the up and down keys for about 8 seconds to reset to factory defaults. Then get your upper and lower limits set by using the up and down buttons and holding the stop button for about 4-5 to five seconds to set each limit. The motor works perfectly with the Tuya Cloud, and just like the last motor it gives you percentage based control via the app, Amazon Echo or Google Home, and the ability to schedule events and create automations within the Tuya app. Again, the Tasmoda setup is almost identical to the battery blinds motor with the Wi-Fi adapter. After using Tuya Convert, you'll need to upgrade to the latest version of Tasmoda using the firmware upgrade feature. Select Tuya MCU as the module type, but this time we're going to need to edit the RX and TX assignments, which are 13 for RX and 15 for TX on this model. Last, go to console and type in Tuya MCU 21, 2, which again assigns that serial address to a dimmer, allowing you to control the position of the motor with dimmer commands. Unfortunately, this method has all the same limitations as the first motor, with one other issue. For whatever reason, the feedback for the position comes on a different serial address, so Tasmoda has no way of both controlling the position and knowing the position at the same time. It doesn't really matter since sending an open command to an already open blind doesn't hurt anything, but it's annoying nonetheless. This motor is extremely powerful and absolutely the one that I'd recommend for heavy duty loads like curtains and large heavy roller shades. The setup is extremely simple with the Tuya app, but also not too tough with Tasmoda. If you can plug in your adapter and you just want your equipment to work, this is absolutely the best solution for you. But if you're a tinkerer, the AM43 has gotten a lot more interesting since the last time I reviewed it. Out of the box, this $40 blinds driver has a Bluetooth phone app that you can use to set up a daily schedule. But if you want to interact with it more than that, it's not really a passable solution. And in my last video I said, I think this blind motor could be made a million times better with something like a Bluetooth to Wi-Fi bridge that would maybe use something like the Tuya app. Hopefully that's in the works. Shortly after that video was released, a fellow Home Assistant user named Christian Tozy created a Bluetooth to Wi-Fi bridge for a Raspberry Pi, which has been forked and modified a number of times. And while I have tried it and gotten it to work, I've never gotten it set up reliably enough to make a video about it or suggest it to other users. But, a few weeks ago, another Home Assistant user named Ben Buxton created an AM43 Bluetooth to Wi-Fi bridge using an ESP32 chip. It's true that the solution is not without issues, but I think it is extremely promising. The Arduino code automatically discovers AM43 devices, and it relays all the messages from your AM43 via MQTT. If you don't know what an MQTT broker is, I highly recommend the first two motors in this video. But if tinkering is your style, here's how you set up the Bluetooth to MQTT bridge using an ESP32. First download the files from the GitHub link in the description and unzip them. Then click on the file called am43-client.ino. The Arduino software will automatically tell you that your file needs to be in a subfolder with the same name. Just click OK. Then close the Arduino IDE. Next, move all the files from the first directory into that new am43-client folder. Next, you'll need to edit the config.h file and put in your Wi-Fi and MQTT information. 
If you haven't ever used an ESP32 chip, you'll also need to click on Preferences and then paste the JSON link from the description into the Additional Boards Manager URL field. Then click Tools, Boards, Boards Manager, and search for ESP32 and install that set of boards. Because the file has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth control, it's actually really huge. So you'll need to select the correct board and partition size to fit everything onto your ESP32 node MCU. For board, select the ESP32 Rover module, and under Partition Scheme, select Minimal Spits, and then hit Upload to Board. Everything else pretty much happens automatically. If you open up the serial monitor, you'll see that your AM43 device gets automatically discovered, and MQTT messages will start to be sent to your broker with the root topic AM43. With an MQTT client like Node Red, subscribe to the topic AM43 front slash number sign, and you'll see all the topics that are being used by the Bluetooth to Wi-Fi bridge. In your Home Assistant configuration file, you're going to add a cover and two sensors, one for the battery and one for the light sensor on the solar panel. After that, your AM43 is now officially freed from the terrible Bluetooth phone app and added to Home Assistant via locally controlled Wi-Fi and MQTT. So for under $50, you're getting a light to medium duty battery powered motor, a solar panel, and a Bluetooth bridge that unlike the Tuya version, can support multiple motors. But it's not perfect. Not only does it require a significant amount more effort to set up than the other options, but the range is surprisingly short, less than 10 feet from what I can tell. And the biggest issue is that it seems like the constant connection and pulling for states causes significantly more battery drain than you would normally see with the app. I noticed between 4 and 6% battery drain per day while using the ESP32 bridge compared to 0 to 1% when only using the scheduled open and close option. If your window gets a lot of sunlight, you'll probably be able to recuperate those losses via the included solar panel, but shaded areas will see a noticeable decrease in battery life. So in my last video, I kind of concluded that neither the Axis nor the AM43 were great options for automating window coverings. In this video, I actually think that all three solutions are pretty great. As I said, I've already replaced my DIY curtain motor with the $60 plug-in version, and I flashed it with Tasmoda for a quieter, more reliable, and more accurate outcome. If you need to automate a set of curtains or blinds and you have an outlet nearby, this is an easy pick, and it amazingly costs less than the parts that I use to build my DIY solution. Speaking of cheap, the AM43 is so cheap, and the additions of both the Raspberry Pi and ESP32 based control have made it much more interesting. But I don't think it's quite crossed the finish line yet, and the Wi Fi bridge solution needs a bit more tweaking before it's declared the clear winner. For most people and most windows, the $90 battery powered Tuya motor is probably the best option. It's a shame that it doesn't ship with a solar panel, and again, don't forget that this motor doesn't ship with interchangeable drive gears, so it'll only work with beaded chains. But for $90, it's not cheap, but it's significantly less than the $250 that Axis wants for their motor. And I actually think the product is quite a bit better. This is the first video that I've released since I crossed 100,000 subscribers. Coming up next will be a personal tour of my home automation setup, including my top five most and least useful home automation products. Thank you to all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for the support of my content. And if you're interested in supporting this channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.